ロボットが出てくるアニメっていうのはほとんど 100% に近いぐらいテレビで見てますそういうところからこういうデザインになったかとは思いますで私がこれを作ってるのはいろんな人に喜んでもらえるものを作りたいというところで少しでもその昔の夢に近づいていく一歩だと思ってます Standing at 28 feet and weighing in at 5 tons, the LW Mononofu is a life size robot that was built by one man. LW Mononofu を製作した南雲正明です。2011年から始めまして、2017年の期間、6年間を費やして製作いたしました。Masaaki works as an engineer at Sakaki Bara, a company that develops machines for agriculture, but they also make life size robots that people can operate for fun. And Masaaki, along with his colleagues, have built them all. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it. So, when Masaaki's job tasked him with creating a robot to help promote the company, he referenced one of his favorite animes as a kid, right? Gundam, I saw it as a kid. I was like, I'm going to be a little bit of a kid. I'm going to be a little bit of a kid. I'm going to be a little bit of a kid. I'm going to be a little bit of a kid. I'm going to be a little bit of a kid. But just building the robot wasn't enough for Masaaki. He wanted something that was bigger and better than his previous models. He poured his heart and soul into making the LW Mononofu fully operational. It can move its arms, its legs, and has a gun that shoots sponge balls. It's his greatest creation yet. This is the fun of making it. It's not fun. 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 よごれるし何も楽しいことはないですよ。子供の頃見てたアニメってのはもう素早く人間の能力を超えてるものはロボットですので、そういうところでの違いでやっぱりまだまだ私の描いているものとは違います。アニメっぽく乗ったなと思わ
tech events, uh, festivals, university lectures or TED talks. When people see the robots, it's like they freeze for a while. There's this moment of, oh, what's going on here? And then it's uh, usually the, it's a childish gleam and, and the joy. I like to use scrap metal because there's so much waste in the world. You can't destroy, you can only make it better. My work is a constant game of chance and that's what I really love about it. Bon, la différence avec un robot puis un automate, c'est qu'un robot, il a une fonction industrielle. Donc il doit, il, hein, il est pas esthétique. Un automate, c'est justement, c'est la poésie, c'est la magie, c'est raconter une histoire. Donc c'est complètement différent. C'est une sculpture animée, c'est une scène, c'est un objet magique. Je m'appelle François Junot, je fabrique des automates et j'habite à Sainte-Croix en Suisse. J'ai toujours aimé la, la, la mécanique depuis euh, très tout petit. Après que j'ai découvert les automates, où il y a l'aspect artistique de la mécanique et en même temps de la sculpture, et c'est ça qui m'a qui plu dès le départ. Les plus vieux automates connus, bon, déjà du temps des, des, des Égyptiens, et puis euh, fin du XVIIIe siècle, qui ont vraiment développé euh, des automates très complexes pour, euh, pour l'époque. J'avais un petit peu une obsession de pouvoir refaire des choses aussi complexes que ce qui se faisait euh, à la fin du XVIIIe siècle. Alors, on en vend toujours euh, aux quatre coins du monde. Pour faire un automate, il y a beaucoup de, il y a beaucoup de métiers. Hein. Il y a déjà la sculpture pour faire la forme, le, le personnage. Après, il y a l'animation de la tête, les yeux, des paupières, il y a les habits, il y a les bénisteries. C'est vrai que ça fait beaucoup de, de, de métiers. Un des derniers qu'on a fait, on a passé peut-être plus que trois ans sur cet automate. L'esthétique, ça va relativement vite. Mais c'est surtout comment on va faire ça, comment on va obtenir tel mouvement, qu'est-ce qu'il va faire, pendant combien de temps. Et ça, c'est assez long à à mettre au point. C'est vrai que moi, il y avait un attrait des automates pour autant qu'on puisse créer des nouvelles choses. Moi, c'est pas juste faire des automates, c'est vraiment de faire évoluer le, le métier. Il n'y a pas vraiment de limite. On peut vraiment euh, toujours continuer à découvrir d'autres choses. On peut toujours aller plus loin. The most important thing to know, if you only know one thing, is that disaster robots make the disaster go away faster. My name is Robin Murphy. I'm a professor of computer science and engineering at Texas A&M, and I work with disaster robots. 1995, the Oklahoma City bombing happened. One of my grad students went up and helped, and he came back and said, we've got to do it differently. We could have had robots like are being designed to go to Mars, to get into places where people and dogs can't go. What we're talking about are robots, either ground, aerial, or marine robots, that can help responders do things that they can't do any other way. And so in 1995, we all started working toward disaster robots. It was 2001 before we actually used one. And that was the first use of ground robots for disaster. It's the ability to do things you couldn't do any other way. They needed to get more than 18 feet into the rubble. Robots can go into these places to get to where there might have been survivors. 
If I can see what I need to see, I can make good decisions to keep the responder safe. So this is the part where we make fun of me for driving. So notice that right now I'm driving heads up, but really the trick of a robot is to get out, get beyond visual line of sight, because that's really the point. Disaster City is one of the emergency management complexes that Texas A&M has. It's designed to test and to train search and rescue teams on how to conduct search and rescue missions. We've supplied robots for 28 disasters. Earthquakes, Hurricane Harvey, we assisted with the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear accident. When we go, we bring robots and people that we've tested and practiced with in our training exercises. One of the biggest challenges to doing work in rescue robotics is not the robotics, it's the everything else. You're going to a different world. It's really challenging to be at a disaster. There's a, a physiological and psychological impact of that. It really takes quite a toll. So you have to be really good at what you're doing. But my job is so incredibly fulfilling. It's about the science and the technology and the way it could be used for societal good. That's a big deal to me.